Good evening. We will call this meeting of your Westland City to Council order. We will begin tonight with the Pledge of Allegiance led by Councilwoman Andrea Burkowski. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Mr. Clerk, roll call please. Councilwoman Bauman. Present. Councilman Hart. Here. Councilman Herzberg. Here. Councilwoman Rakowski. Present. Pro Tem Sampi. Present. President McDermott. Here. A quorum is present. Okay. We will start off tonight's meeting with special announcements and presentations. We will begin with our Parks and Recreation Director, Kyle Mulligan. Kyle. Good evening, City Council. Uh, I wanted to share a few quick updates tonight uh, happening in the Parks and Recreation Department. Some events, programs, and let the residents know exactly where they can locate this information. Um, all of Westland Parks and Recreation offerings, events, programs, and classes are available on the cityofwestland.com recreation portal. Uh, you can RSVP to events, sign up for programs. It's very easy to maneuver the site and see all that there is to offer. Um, wanted to touch base on a couple of things here. Uh, next month, one month from today, is the Parks and Recreation uh, Family Bowling Night at Westland Bowl. Um, we're hosting this to kind of kick off midwinter break for the um, Wayne Westland School District families. Uh, two games, shoe rentals, and two slices of pizza for only $10 per person. So please bring the whole family out. Again, that's February 16th. The event runs from 6 to 8 p.m. And my parks team is going to be on site to speak with everyone and discuss Westland events and programs for upcoming in 2024. Uh, the following month in March, on March 15th, um, also a Friday evening, the Parks and Rec team will host a community and family game night here at City Hall. Uh, you can choose from a large collection of board games, card games, or bring your own from home and spend the evening with other residents looking for quality family time together. Um, we'll also have some larger games available to play like Big Jenga, Cornhole, and other fun games, and that is also from 6 to 8 on March 15th. We have some programs starting up in the next couple of months uh, that we'll be able to get out to the public. Um, we have art classes that are going to be starting here at City Hall on Thursdays in March, uh, and there are class options for all ages, uh, kids, teens, and adults, uh, basic drawing and painting. Um, lastly, our partnership with the Skyhawk Sports Academy is back for spring sessions. And there are two multi-sport sampler options to choose from, depending on the age of your child. These sports samplers will touch base on different sports each week and give kids the basic fundamentals of these sports and activities. Uh, just to reiterate, um, we can always be contacted for any questions through the Parks and Rec Department by emailing parks at cityofwestland.com or calling 734-722-7620. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Kyle. We will also hear in special announcements and presentations from Bridget Gormley at the Michigan Humane Society. Bridget. Good evening, and thank you so much, Council President McDermott, for having us here. My name is Bridget Gormley. I am a social worker at Michigan Humane, formerly known as Michigan Humane Society. I'm just here to let the people of Westland know some of our new programs and initiatives that we've been taking. Um, we are here to serve and provide resources for the people of Westland as well as surrounding counties in southeastern Michigan. The first thing that I would like to address is we have recently opened our new community advocate program. So when we are fully staffed, we will have four social workers on staff at Michigan Humane. Um, it may seem a little weird to have both animal welfare as well as human welfare, but there is a lot of overlap between the two groups, and we're finding that it's important to serve both ends of the leash. 
So we want to make sure that both your pet and you as a human being are cared for. So our social workers are on site at our Westland location off of North Newburgh Road every Monday and Thursday. We are here for walk-in appointments. You can also give our call center a call at 866 648-623, I'm sorry, 6263 to um, request a conversation with us, to get our personal information to contact us. We're here to talk about any housing resources, utility or bill support, as well as um, if you're experiencing any food scarcity and you're in need of any services involving domestic violence or if you're ex you know, someone who's an unhoused individual. Um, the next program I'd like to address is our Safety Net Foster Program. A few years ago, Michigan Humane began our Safety Net Foster Program. The program involves the fostering of owned animals. So the program will take in an owned pet for anywhere from one to three months, with our three months being the limit. Um, and so this program is designed to prevent owners from having to surrender their animals if they are experiencing difficult circumstances. That can be anything from recent evictions, experiencing a medical emergency, or just going through some financial hardships. We want to be the barrier between having to surrender your pet and keeping them in the home. Um, we are at the moment looking to recruit more fosters. So if you're interested in that, you can check out our website and our foster tab. We would love to have Anyone interested in taking in owned pets, um, this program is an amazing supportive system for our community. I'd also like to bring attention to the program in case you yourself, a loved one, or anyone you know may need the program for something they're currently going through. Um, and then our last thing that I'd like to address is our pet food pantry. About two and a half years ago, Michigan Humane began, actually it's been closer to three now, but we began our free pet food pantry. It began in New Center in Detroit every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 9 a.m. to 12. We would see anywhere from 150 to 300 clients who would be able to go there to receive free cat and dog food, occasionally litter, as well as other supplies like bedding, crates, leashes, collars. Um, since our model grew so quickly, we have changed it from a pull model to a push model. So now we have about 18 distribution sites that run every month. You can attend an event once a month and get free pet food for yourself as well as food for your household. They have fresh groceries there, produce, protein, pantry items. So that is available. Um, I'm going to leave two um, flyers for you. The first one discusses um, our pet food pantries, and then the other one is our safety net program. We do have a pet pantry in Westland. It's off of Wayne Road at St. Mary Cause of Our Joy. The next pantry event we have there is Tuesday, January 23rd at 9 a.m. I do recommend getting there early because we do run out of food quite quickly. And last but not least, the, our pet pantry does have a website with a living calendar that is updated periodically, usually daily or weekly. There's information on there to also receive free straw in case you have an animal that lives outside and you need straw to supplement their doghouse, crate, whatever it is to keep your animal warm. So we'll have those flyers available. Like I said, please give our call center a call if you have any questions. You can also email us at communityadvocate at michiganhumane.org. Is there any questions about any of those programs? Doesn't look like it. Thank you, Bridget. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right. We will now move on to questions or input on the agenda from the public. This section will allow members of the public at the beginning of the meeting to address the council regarding items that are on tonight's business agenda. Questions asked may be responded to during the agenda item following a motion and support from your city council. I would remind people, too, to please wait until you are called upon to come up to the lectern. Thank you. Is there anyone on my right? Yes, sir. Mr. Pruitt. My name is Edward Pruitt, and tonight I will be speaking in accordance to new business items one and two. Through this, I am publicly presenting my interest for the open seat on council. It is my belief that the decision before you is not an easy decision. 
and I don't envy any of you for the decisions you have to make. It is my belief that our de deepest regrets always come from a time when we could have and should have done something differently but didn't. In this, we must reflect and do something to rectify it or posture ourselves to stand differently from the beginning at every new beginning. While there is much for me to speak to tonight, I have chosen to speak directly to the topic of diversity. Many times in our society, we look to having diversity in our midst. When we implement it, it often comes in a form of race only. Yes, that consideration is a necessary inclusion into the conversation so that we have a reflective representation of our community within our government. Our government and representation must reflect our communities. Right now, we don't have that representation. Even further, we must look towards relatability. Can the selected candidate uh, relate to the constituency? Is it broad or nuanced? Does the selected candidate relate to a broad sector of our community or just a small segment? I believe that our next council member chosen must have lived what a vast majority of our community lives through or has lived through. This is something I possess in addition to the experience to effectively handle the responsibilities before council members. In my life, I've lived through growing up surrounded by wealth, living in neighborhoods where many of the city's elite want to live. I've also lived in places where slumlords were my landlords. I've, in my life, I've lived in a two-parent household. I also lived in a single-parent household. In my life as a child, I've witnessed and experienced the actions and effects of domestic violence. As an adult, I've experienced being the victim of continued domestic violence. In my life, I've experienced having to choose between school and feeding my child. I've experienced buying food and, because of power outages, losing all and not knowing how I would replace it. I've lived pulling myself up by my own bootstraps only to have them break or be cut. I've also been extremely successful. I could go on, but the point has been made. In this time, the people must have representation that truly represents them. Lastly, a quote attributed to the late and honored Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Courage is an inner resolution to go forward despite obstacles. Cowardice is a submissive surrender to the circumstances. Courage breeds creativity. Cowardice represses fear and is mastered by it. Cowardice asks the question, is it safe? Expediency asks the question, is it politic? Vanity asks the question, is it popular? But conscience asks the question, is it right? The people want a new voice on council who will truly work for them. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone on my left? Is there anyone on my right wishing to speak on the agenda? Yes, ma'am. All right, sorry about that. Okay. Good evening, my name is Candy Halton and I am going to address the new business items one and two. I brought here today my daughter to help educate her on politics and how to use her voice to bring about positive and effective change. On January the 9th, 2024, I called and spoke to Councilman McDormick asking for qualifications and requirements to be eligible for an open vacancy on council. I was never given a deadline, but he did encourage me to email six council members expressing my interest and in that the weekend of January the 13th, the council will be meeting with candidates for interviews. I never received a call for those interviews either. On January the 10th, 2024, I emailed all six council members expressing my interest for council, congratulating them on their achievements and asking them for their vote. On January the 10th, I received one response from Councilman Hart. Once again, I want to thank you for responding. On January the 12th, I received a beautiful response from Councilwoman Sampy. And once again, I want to tell you, thank you. On January the 15th, I received, I received another response from Councilwoman Ballman asking me to give her a call, and once again, thank you for your response. Three of the remaining members never responded, and two of them are actually running for state representative in our district, and that alone left me baffled. 
I ask myself, what did I do to not receive a response from my elected officials who happen to sit on Westland City Council? Is it the color of my skin? Did I offend anyone by my email? It couldn't be because my husband is a veteran and fought to protect this country and served three terms in Iraq. I'm still confused. Why would you ignore my request by not even responding to my email? Could this too be a form of murder? I'm going to repeat that because my heart is racing right now. Could this too be a form of voter suppression? I brought my daughter here once again because this is my baby and she is our future. She is also a student of Wayne Westland School District and she's grown up here her entire life. This is something too she must face here in Westland. I want her to understand the power of using her voice, speaking up for herself and- Ma'am, your, your time is up, respectfully. Thank you. You're welcome, thank you. Once again, my name is Candy Halton. Is there anyone else on my left wishing to speak on the agenda? Anyone else on my right wishing to speak on the agenda? Yes. That's right. I wasn't going to speak, but I'm going to have to. My name is Jody White. And um, I just want this lady to know that, you know, we had a mayor that quit in the middle of his term. And then because of that, we had a state rep take his spot. And now we have council people wanting to take um, the spot. So, what I'd like to know is like what actually is the charter saying to do and what is the judges um, advising for us to do. I know we have an attorney here for Westland, but um, it's happening in quite a few of our cities. Um, it's happening in Southfield, Oakland County, Board of Commissioners. These people, while they've already elected to be a public functionary, have chosen to um, move into a different position. So um, I just find that very interesting to, to know that Sometimes we wonder why we make some of the mess that we make. So um, I just feel that we should be following the charter. If there's a confusion with the charter, I think we should be going to the judges because they should be the ones making the decision, not an attorney or, or a councilman or a city clerk. That's my opinion. And um, I wish you guys the best as you make your decision on who should be the best person to sit at this next seat because you guys all do an amazing job. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, one more time, anyone else on my left? Yes, ma'am. Hi, I'm Debbie Gable. I know you guys have heard from me. I sent an email to every single one of you also um, regarding who I thought would do a good job as if replacing uh, Councilman Godbout. I did receive two conversations. I had two conversations, one with you, Councilwoman Zampi, and one with you, Councilman McDermott. And I appreciate those also. I think when we vote you in, we're voting you in so that you can do what we need to have happen. So I think it's important to listen to our voices. And I think it's really important to choose some change and some diversity because we have been going on for way too long of the same, 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 and it's not getting us anywhere. There's still so many, many people hurting there's so many people that aren't being supported, and we need to bring new faces and new ideas, new conversations onto council. That's why I keep reiterating that I think um, Mr. Pruitt would be an excellent candidate. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Is there anyone else on my right? Anyone else on my left? Anyone else in the audience? Citizens' comments on the agenda. Hearing and seeing none, we will move on to the consent calendar. Is there a motion? There is a motion by Councilman Hart, supported by Councilman Herzberg. Oh, excuse me. Any change? I'm so sorry. Any changes to the consent calendar? Any changes to the consent calendar? Any dissent? Any dissent? Hearing, seeing none. Motion carries unanimously. Council has approved the following consent calendar items. Approval of minutes of the regular meeting held January 2, 2024. Traffic control order 2024-02. Install one stop sign on westbound Glenwood at John Hicks. 
approval of no before email and cybersecurity training subscription renewal through CDWG. The subscription will resume immediately and be effective for a one year period in the amount of $6,720. Approval of policy management subscription renewal with Power DMS. The subscription is effective for a period of one year in the amount of $11,000. $221.03. Approval of Links at Gateway Golf Course Maintenance Contract Rate Adjustment for the 2024 season. Annual maintenance will increase from $167,000 to $172,000 and authorizes the Mayor and City Clerk to sign a contract approved by the City Attorney. Approval of Professional Services Agreement Extension with Gooseworks LLC for Goose Control Services at the Mac Mayfield Golf Course. Extension shall be for a three-year period in the amount not to exceed $6,500. Introduction of Manpower Budget Amendment for the Confidential Secretary Pay Grade. Introduction of Amendments to Chapter 46-2 of the City Code of Ordinance to Adjusted Rates at the City's Golf Course and Ice Arena. Approval of Planning Commission 2024 Annual Report. The last item approved on the consent calendar today, adoption of a prepared resolution of support for celebrating National Unclaimed Property Day on February 1, 2024, supporting the encouragement of people learning whether or not they are entitled to receive unclaimed funds. Moving to payment of voucher. Is there a motion? So moved. There's a motion by Councilman Hart, support by Councilman Herzberg. Is there any discussion from the maker? <coughs> any discussion from the supporter? Any additional discussion? Any additional discussion? Any dissent? Any dissent? Hearing none, seeing none, motion carries unanimously. New business, item one. Nominations for the office of city council member to fill the unexpired partial term created by the resignation of James Godbout until certification of the November 4, 2025 general city election. Council President. We yes. Nominate Delano Hornbuckle. Okay. There's a nomination for Delano Hornbuckle. Are there any other nominations? I'd like to nominate Adam Hammonds and there, Edward Pruitt. There's a nomination for Adam Hammonds and for Edward Pruitt. Are there any other? Give me a second. Oh, please. I'm so sorry. Council President. Council President. I had indicated um, a desire to speak, and unfortunately, oh, I'm so um, sorry. Because of nominations, we don't have to be. Um, recognized by the chair, but I actually have a motion to present to the floor okay. uh, to, to suspend the vote. It seems as though information was given to those wishing to be nominated that um, obviously uh, was not correct or wasn't relayed to the rest of us. And according to our policies and procedures, we must act to vote it by at least the second meeting after the vacancy has been occurred. So I would like to postpone this vote until the next council meeting so that everybody has an opportunity to have been heard and interviewed or talked to, what have you, have correct information and be prepared for the vote. Support. So our my support. 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 support, all of the support. Okay. There is a motion on the floor by Councilwoman Rakowski and it has support by Councilwoman Bauman. Okay. Okay. And uh, roll call. On the motion, right? Discussion. Uh, excuse me. Discussion. Is there any discussion on the motion from the maker? Thank you. I, I think I, I've made my point during my motion, but um, hearing that there was information that um, was given to one of the potential nominees, and there's, um, I believe, a field of 13 people wishing to have this appointment, uh, I think haste is not the right uh, action <coughs> to be taken. Um, we have until the next meeting per our policies. And I think that would allow the individuals who wish to be considered um, and the council members who would be acting on that vote 
an appropriate amount of time to be making a thoughtful um, decision. Okay. Is there any other discussion? Yes. Okay. Um, I, I am supporting this, um, not just seconding it per se. I actually asked this of the council president today, like what are the options, what are the possibilities of doing this for, for different reasons, but especially hearing today that there was some miscommunication and misunderstandings that is very compelling to really take advantage of what the charter allows us to do, which is to not just have it, um, not just like um, rush it as... Uh, um, Councilman Murkowski also said, so I just I do support that, and I thank you. Okay, is there any additional discussion? Yes. Um, yeah, I also support this as well, too, because I think for us, we people think we work this as a full-time job, and we do our best to try to meet with people and get back and talk to people, but it really is not fair for us to sit here and make a decision. This is a two-year commitment. It ends in 2025. I had the, the best intentions to meet with everyone individually. There was discussion, um, can we postpone? So there was you know, a question if that was even an option. So I do support this. I do think that we need to allow individuals the right information, the right time, and the right conversations as well too. Again, this is a really important decision. There's, it's pretty heavy on all of us. Is there any additional discussion? The city attorney? Oh, sorry. Uh, Council President, a couple of questions were raised that I just want to clear up in terms of the charter provisions. The charter provision, section 4.4, defines when a vacancy occurs in elective office, which includes when a vacancy is deemed to exist when someone resigns, and that's the instance here. There are other ways in which a vacancy occurs, but in this instance, it was resignation. And then the question was about how do you fill that? The charter does some direction in section 4.6. It, it should be filled, uh, then the council by a majority vote of its members shall fill such vacancy only until the next general election at which election the unexpired term uh, occurs. So it's for the period as outlined uh, here in the resolution and, and, and in the statements. And then finally, I would remind folks who, the council's aware of this, uh, the, the citizens may be not, there are policies and procedures by which city council has adopted and operates, and that specifically calls out that all vacancies in elective positions, this is Article 2, Section 1A, all vacancies in elective positions shall be filled by a majority vote of seated members no later than uh, the second regular city council meeting following the effective date of the vacancy provided a number of affirmative votes are cast. So um, uh, section 1B also points to this no later than the second regular city council meeting following the effective date of the, of the vacancy. So it's your charter provisions and your policy provisions which uh, are controlling here. Uh, and again, for questions that were asked from the audience, I wanted to pass it along. Thank you. Councilman Herzberg. Thank you. Could we just clarify what the motion was? I know it was for the next meeting, but was it pending a study session? No, the motion was just to postpone to the next meeting so that everybody could get clear and concise information on the appointment. So it's so just I thought I heard some discussion about wanting to meet openly with some of the candidates. Is that the intention here? To it's, no, it's just to postpone to the next meeting. Okay. So I have discussion. Um, first off, I'd like to apologize to Ms. Halton if I gave incorrect information. That was not at all uh, my intent. We had discussed uh, as a council um, meeting with different candidates. And when I mentioned the word interview, I didn't mean it as a formal interview process. And if I gave you incorrect information, I'm humbly and truly sorry. It was not my intent to mislead anyone, not any of my colleagues, of course, and certainly not anybody that is interested in the appointment to city council. So that is on me. I own that miscommunication, and I'm very uh, truly sorry for that. Um, with this motion to postpone, I do support it as well, just so we can make sure that everybody has clear and accurate information. Uh, again, I am very truly sorry that anything that I may have said got lost in communication there. That's on me. Uh, that is my fault. So I'm very sorry. Um, it was not uh, an intent of anyone to, to tell one person one thing and somebody else something else. Um, I was, when I spoke with you on the phone, recommending to speak with each of my colleagues to, to have them you know, interview you, so to speak. So 
I apologize for the miscommunication. That is on me. And again, I am truly and humbly sorry for that and that you um, had to come up here and, and, and share your story. So thank you for sharing that with us. And again, very, very sorry. And apologies to my colleagues for uh, any mix-up that I may have created as a, as a leader here and council president. So very much apologize. And I'm very sorry about that. No issue. Discussion? Yes, yes councilwoman. Um, Thank you, thank you so much, Council President. Um, through the chair to the city attorney, just to confirm um, with our policies and procedures, there has to be a filled spot by the next meeting. So it could be however many rounds that need to be had in order for us, like we cannot leave next meeting until an appointment is made. Can you please confirm that? So the, your policies and procedures are not particularly clear on rounds in a meeting it, uh, because section four of article two, un, unfilled elective vacancies, section four says in, in the event a sufficient number of votes to appoint an individual to a vacancy with an elective position does not occur, this same nomination appointment procedure shall be utilized at every successive regular city council meeting and until appointment is approved. Thank you, so to confirm, we have to vote, but it, it could carry over to a, a nec the next meeting. Okay, That's thank correct. you. Thank you very much for the clarification and those in the audience and those at home. Council President, if I may. Yes, Councilwoman Murkowski. Yes. And um, Ms. Halton, I also owe you an apology for not responding. There's several people who have emailed me um, I do work from eight to four and my mom's back in the hospital, so I have been spending time at her bedside. So I hope you'll give me some grace, but I, I do wanna have an opportunity to speak with you, hence, and, and Mr. Pruitt as well. So hence my, my desire to pump the brakes here a little bit. Thank you. Is there any additional discussion? Councilman Herzberg. Thanks, only that I will be supporting the motion and I just wanna thank council for really trying to be open and transparent and not, not rushing into doing an appointment. So looking forward to the next meeting. Any additional discussion? Any additional discussion? Any dissent? Any dissent? Roll call, Mr. Clerk. Councilwoman Bauman. Yes. Councilman Hart. Yes. Councilman Herzberg. Yes. Councilwoman Rakowski. Yes. Pro Tem Sampi. Yes. President McDermott. Yes. Motion passes unanimously. And therefore, item one is postponed. Item two will fall off of the agenda. We will move to item three, new business. Confirmation of reappointment of Rod Curry to the Westland Board of Review for a three-year term, effective upon council confirmation and to expire December 31, 2026. Seven. Support. There is a motion by Councilwoman Rakowski, supported by Councilman Herzberg. Is there any discussion from the maker? No. Any discussion from the supporter? Is there any additional discussion? No. Yes, Councilwoman Baum. Due to all, this, all the things that were going on, I guess I, can I have a little information about these people since I have not had a chance to meet them? Is that a fair question to ask? Okay. No? Yeah, there's information in the packet. Okay, Usually okay, the mayor sorry, would have their sorry. resume as well. Okay. I did. Um, I did. Look, I glanced through it, but I, I was like, I, I didn't get a chance to talk to people, so I just didn't know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, and this is a reappointment okay, for someone right. who's been. That's on. good. That's, that's fine. Thank and you. I believe Rod is now the longest serving board member in the city. And it sounds like Rod is the longest serving board member in our community as well here in the city of Westland. So even better. Is that uh, all your discussion, Councilwoman? Okay. Is he here no. Is, is there any additional discussion? Any additional discussion? Any dissent? Any dissent? Hearing none, motion carries. New business, item four. Confirmation of reappointment of Scott Catalo to the Tax Increment Finance Authority for a six-year term, effective upon council confirmation to expire December 31, 2029. So moved. Support. There is a motion by Council President Pro Tem Sampi, supported by Councilman Hart. Is there any discussion from the maker? Any discussion from the supporter? Any additional discussion? 
Any additional discussion? Any dissent? Any dissent? Hearing none, motion carries unanimously. New business, item five. Confirmation of appointment of Sharon Sullivan to the Parks and Recreation Advisory Council for a two-year term with the term to expire December 31, 2025. So, so support. There's a motion by Councilman Hart, supported by Pro Tem Sampi. Is there any discussion from the maker? Any discussion from the supporter? Um, yeah, so this is actually a, a re, I'm sorry, not a reappointment, a new appointment. So I just want to thank Ms. Sullivan for being here today and also volunteering for the Parks and Rec Board. She's very active in the community, very familiar with both her and John. So I want to appreciate you stepping up and thank you again for just the willingness to support our Parks and Rec. Is there any additional discussion? Uh, any additional discussion? I do have discussion. I just wanted to also thank um, Ms. Sullivan. She is a teacher here in Wayne Westland Schools, and she's also on our Wayne or on our Westland Historic Village uh, Commission as well. So she's pulling double duty for us. So we really appreciate everything she brings to the community for our kids, uh, for the city of Westland, and for all of our residents. And we know that she'll do an outstanding job here on our Parks and Rec Advisory. Is there any dissent? Is there any dissent? Hearing and seeing none, motion carries unanimously. Sharon, stand and be recognized. New business, item six. Approval of proposed land division and combination 6111 and 6077 North Harvey, west side of Harvey, north of Stacy. This is planning department number 22. 6-4, Planning Commission recommends approval, and if approved, directs the City Attorney to draft the necessary land division resolution. So moved. There is a motion by Councilman Herzberg, supported by Councilman Murkowski. Mo? Thanks, Council President. Uh, these subject properties are zoned R5 single-family residential. Uh, the property at 6111 North Harvey is this larger square where my cursor is, or the larger outline square on the screen. Uh, it's currently 100 feet wide and developed by a single family home. Uh, and then we have 6077 North Harvey, that's a smaller rectangular shaped parcel, 40 feet wide, uh, and also developed with a single family home. The petitioner, um, who is the owner of uh, 6111, uh, is seeking to split off 30 feet from that large square uh, and basically give it and combine it with 6077 North Harvey. Uh, these are what the new parcels would look like if you remove that yellow rectangular uh, outline and kind of looked at them with the red line there. Uh, both the same size. Uh, proposed parcel A uh, over here will be uh, 80, uh, I'm sorry, 94, 50 square feet, 70 feet wide, and then also parcel B, uh, 6077, the new parcel B would also be the same size, 94, 50 square feet, 70 feet wide. Uh, your backup for parcel A says 60 feet wide. Uh, Councilman, uh, I'm sorry, Councilwoman Bauman um, kind of noticed that, and that's a typo in there, so it's supposed to be 70 feet. Um, that doesn't affect the approval here. We'll modify this. Um, the survey's correct. We'll just modify the staff report and, and send it back when you uh, approve the land division recording uh, at next month's meeting. meeting. The Planning Commission did review this in the beginning of the month at its regular meeting and is recommending approval. I don't know if the petitioner is here, but I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Both of the proposed parcels comply with all of the zoning requirements of the R5 single family district. And Mo, the petitioner is here. If you'd okay. like to come up and be recognized. Yes. Yes. I'm if you'd like to come up to the lectern, please. Thank you. Oh, I'm so sorry. My name is Cass Collins. I have a notarized corporate resolution to uh, represent the petitioner. If you had any questions, I'm prepared to answer. Okay. Is there any questions? Any questions? Okay. Any questions? <laughs> no. Looks like there are no questions for you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And was there any discussion from the maker? No. Any discussion from the supporter? 
Any additional discussion? Any dissent? Any dissent? Hearing and seeing none, motion carries unanimously. Thank you. All right, so we will now move on to public comment. Everyone wishing to speak before the council shall do so in a civil manner. Speakers shall refrain from abusive or profane remarks, vulgar language, disruptive outbursts, threats, racial slurs, or other conduct that interferes with the orderly conduct of the business meeting. Personal attacks on council members, the administration, city staff, other speakers, or members of the public will not be tolerated. The clock will start upon the first words of the speaker and will not stop while the speaker is recognized from the floor. The speaker can ask questions. At this time, in person question may respond during the speaker's allotment of time. However, the clock will not be stopped once it is started. The clock will continue to run until the three minutes is up or the person is done speaking, whichever comes first. Is there anyone on the Council President, point of information. Yeah. Um, some people didn't get the updated memo outside of the council that want that last item was removed from the agenda today by petition uh, from the petitioner. So there was some confusion. So oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> item seven was removed uh, from on the agenda tonight from the petitioner. They requested that uh, prior to the meeting to be removed and that was updated and removed on tonight's business agenda. Thank you, Councilman. Is there anyone on my left for public comment? Is there anyone on my right for public comment? Yes, sir. Chris Sanders, I'm from a neighboring community, but I was asked to come here. Um, a Wayne resident messaged me on Facebook, not sure why they got a letter from the city clerk's office about their early voting from the city of West Lane. They live on Upland Court, which is in this uh, new, um, the, the uh, Thin Bark subdivision, which is like three blocks off of Glenwood. That's my question. Okay. Thank you. Is there I anyone else? from the West End City Clerk's Office. Yes, thank you. Is there anyone else on my left, public comment? Yes, sir, Mr. Stadjack. Good evening, council members, uh, citizens of Westland. Uh, I just want to talk about uh, the city code of ordinances, adjusting the rates at the city golf courses and arenas. Uh, I have a golf league that's been in existence since, uh, oh, Brian Harno is working behind the counter. So that means we're getting old. Uh, I hope these races don't go too high because we're not tied in with the tie bar like some people here in the city. And all, quite a few of our guys are retired, so they're on set incomes. And uh, that tie bar issue is really an issue with some of our older folks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anyone on my right? Yes, sir. Edward Pruitt again. Uh -huh. Whew. That's all I can say for the moment. Uh, I, I, I got two things I'm going to speak to, but uh, the first piece is I, I'm glad that there's a postponement for the moment, that everybody can have time to have conversations. <coughs> I, I can't imagine the pressure that you all were under and, and, and the thoughts that you had, especially for this being such a lengthy term. Uh, I know the weight was on my shoulders. and the level of nervousness <laughs> like I haven't seen in quite a long time. Um, I do want to thank uh, Councilwoman Bauman, uh, Councilman Hertzberg, Council Pro Tem uh, Sampy, Council President McDermott for the time to be able to sit down with you all and have conversations. I know our conversation was a long one, <laughs> but I thank you for that time. I look forward to our conversation, Councilwoman Rakowski, as well. I would love to have a conversation with you, Councilman uh, Hart. Um, lastly, I want to mention about the, what the Michigan Humane said. <laughs> um, I think that expansion that they have demonstrated um, really is going to help our community a lot. I really, what really stuck with me was they want to help both sides of the leash. I think that's innovative 
and it's necessary for, you know, not only our, our pet family, but the other side of the family. Uh, and to be able to have social workers in many different realms, extra resources. I mean, I know many of us, even in this day and age, after COVID, after the pandemic, still are struggling with food insecurities. Mm -hmm. And to be able to have more resources in those respects, I, I think that's absolutely necessary and important. I hear time and time again, um, we see it on social media, can you lend me some cans, give me some cans, so that I can either pay my medical bills or so I can grab something to eat or grab some clothes. And to see more organizations reaching out and touching out, um, in, in, uh, reaching out in that realm um, is necessary. Again, thank you all. Um, sleep well tonight, please, because I know, I, I know. Uh, and I know you have a lot more work to do, so thank you. Is there anyone else on my left who can speak to Warren? Uh, good evening, Arthur Warren, president of the South Peace Westland Homeowners Association. And through the chair to the city clerk, was there any public notice given to those satellite ballot boxes? Or, or where the locations of those satellite boxes are? Did you ever yeah, give out a notice? Uh, of where they are, where they're located? Because I just noticed from that we have From our office or from the state? The, the city's satellite ballot yeah, boxes. No, the city did not spend resources to do that. However, it did, within the parameters of the requirement, notify the state, and it's on what they call the MVIC, Michigan Voter Information Center website. Well, could you tell us where those satellite bo ballot boxes are? I can. Thank you. If you'd like. Yes. I would like now, to so there has been one at City Hall for seven years. There is one at the fire station near the intersection of Palmer and Newburgh. There is one at the Jefferson Barnes Vitality Center. There is one at the fire station near Middle Belt in Annapolis. There is one at the Canine Corral off of Marquette. There is one at the fire station near the intersection of Merriman and Ann Arbor Trail. You're welcome. Okay. Is there anyone on my right public comment on the agenda? Yes, ma'am, Ms. Halton. Just public. All right, so I want to come back and I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you to every council member up here today. Um, what we displayed was accountability and that is what our residents need here in Westland. So I wanted to come up here and publicly tell you thank you. Um, I do want to finish what I had on my, my list, and it's very short, and I can conclude um, what I put on here is that I said that we are family because we are. We may look different, but we are family. And what family do when we have a disagreement, we come together, we talk about it, we begin to understand each other's views, and we get to the bottom of it without belittling one another. And I believe we did that today. And so that's what I wanted to address. Once again, my name is Candy Halton. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else on my left for public comment on the agenda? Anyone else on my right public comment on the agenda? Council President, just public comment, not on the agenda. Just, just public comment. <laughs> Is there anyone else in the audience? Okay, you're going to see none. We will close public comment. And we don't have the mayor tonight, but I understand that Director Smith has some comments from the administration. Thank you, Council President. Uh, the mayor asked me to share with everybody that he will be hosting a listening tour. The first stop will be at the Jefferson Barnes Community Vitality Center on January 22nd at 9 a.m. Here the residents can learn about what the mayor has done since assuming office in November. He will also be discussing what the administration is currently working on. Uh, residents should come prepared with any questions they may have for him or other city officials. Light refreshments will also be served during the meeting. Um, and the upcoming dates that have been uh, worked out so far, like I said, Jefferson Barnes on January 22nd at 9 a.m. 
the William P. Faust Library on February 26th at 6 p.m., Westland City Hall on March the 6th at 5.30 p.m. Uh, also, you can, uh, there will be future dates, so if you want to go to the website, it is on the website. Uh, also, when the weather is warmer, he will also, also be visiting uh, the city parks. Uh, he looks forward to seeing everybody there. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any comments from the city attorney's office this Nothing evening? This evening? Okay, thank you. We will now move on to comments from the city council. We will begin tonight with comments from Councilman Hart. No comments for me today, Council President. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Councilman. We will now move on to comments from Councilman Herzberg. Thank you. Um, I just want to thank all the candidates for being understanding, the candidates who were seeking to be appointed to the City Council. Um, I know there's a few more in the audience that didn't come up and speak, so I'm looking forward to having conversations with all of you um, and hoping that we can come together as a council and, and really pick the right person. So that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, we will now hear from Councilwoman Rutkowski. Thank you, Council President. Good evening, everyone. Uh, first, I'd like, like to uh, thank my colleagues um, for going um, together in this decision. I think it's important. Um, you know, we have this opportunity and we have, I think I, I was contacted at least by 13 individuals. So, um, you know, when you look at the number of people that are interested, you certainly want to give everybody an opportunity to be heard. And though we might already, some of us I'm sure already kind of have um, something in mind, everyone deserves to be heard. And I want to make sure that I have the opportunity to hear everyone. Um, so I, I appreciate the council, um, you know, taking our, our due diligence. Um, I would like to thank and congratulate those who have been reappointed or newly appointed to our boards. Um, I always believe that your service to your community is the best work of life. I might steal that from the JCs. They won't mind. Um, <laughs> and then I would like to invite um, everyone uh, to uh, participate in supporting our Westland Youth Athletic Association um, on January 20th, our Westland Finest and Bravest are going against Wayne's Finest and Bravest, and they're hitting the hardwood. Um, and they're going to play some basketball. It's a $5 entry fee. All of, there's some other things going on, 50-50. I think they're having a bake sale. Um, but all the proceeds benefit the Westland Youth Athletic Association, and um, that's a volunteer-driven organization. That they have baseball teams, football, and cheer that they're supporting. Um, it would be wonderful if they would take on maybe adding some other sports like tennis or basketball, but um, we got to find the volunteers to coach that, right? So if anybody's interested, contact your uh, the Westland Youth Athletic Association. Um, and in addition to that, the fire department's going to be participating in the con uh, Community Risk Reduction Week. Um, which is very important. They're going to be utilizing five E's, and I'm going to mess them up. It's like education, uh, economics, oh, chief, help me, <laughs> environment, e evaluation, uh, I don't know. But there's five E's, and the point is, is they're going to be working hard in our community for the week um, to lower our risk. Um, you know, they responded to 16,443 calls last year, and so hopefully through this week-long endeavor, maybe they'll be able to chip away at a few of those incidents and runs, because um, Lord knows that, you know, uh, that, that's a huge number of runs. We have uh, probably, uh, they you know, it's been said we have more in fire incidents per capita than even the city of Detroit. So when you really put it into those um, you know, visuals that they're busy, they're busy and they want, they want to keep us safe. They want to, um, you know, do everything that they can. So in, in addition to responding when we dial 911, they're going to be doing some other risk mitigation. So if you see them out and about, say thank you and find out from them what they're doing. Um, other than that, um, I hope all of you have a fantastic January and, um, I thought it was really interesting that um, there's a little mo kind of a mobile pet pantry available. Um, so on January 23rd, I'm just going to reiterate what the Humane Society representative said um, at St. Mary Cause of Our Joy, which is on Wayne Road um, next to what I believe is now Value City. I still want to call it Art Van. I'm sorry. Um, 
they'll have pet supplies and um, they always have um, gleaners there too. So I wonder if they'll have it together. It'd be interesting to know, but they did say to get there early. Um, and that's one of the biggest reasons people are bringing their dogs to the Humane Society is because they can't feed them. Um, so this is a, a wonderful um, endeavor that they have. So, and it's interesting, the mental health is interesting as well. So I'd like to look into that. But again, I uh, hope you enjoy your January. Thank you again, colleagues. And we will, we will see you in February. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilwoman Bowman. I just want to say I'm really glad that um, we were able to move this off for the one meeting, give us a little more time. And I think I didn't look at the calendar, but I think we actually, this is a longer period between our this meeting and the next one. I think we have a little extra time just because it's first and third. Um, and so I appreciate one, I appreciate um, the, have, have the opportunity I've had with some of the candidates trying to talk to them and um, ask questions and learn through this process. And um, I, I, I too uh, share in the sentiment of, whew, um, not, not that we're not going to have to do it until we, in, in, at our next meeting, but there was an element that what, what was weighing on me was um, that being elected to serve the city of Westland, every vote has to be a voice of Westland. Now, it's not going to be for everyone. We're all not going to agree, and I know that. But I'm, it was a very, it was, I, I, I want to be careful of the word, but kind of, it was daunting, but positively daunting, but in the sense that, like, my vote is needs to be reflective, reflective to the best of I can of 84,000 people, um, give or take. You know that the the numbers and it was really it was not one of seven, and I felt that and felt that. So I appreciate all the candidates that actually stepped forward to say that I want to be appointed, and knowing that it is an appointment for almost two years, that's a long time, and I'm I'm just so, you know. I, 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 was, I was like, is it possible to postpone it? Can we do that? And so I was very, very pleased to know that um, that became a possibility and a real, a real thing. So I just want, again, to appreciate the citizens, um, the residents, you know, bearing with us through this process, um, that we'll have another, we'll, we'll take care of it next time. Um, but, and appreciate, and I do want to get, talk to um, anyone I didn't get a chance to talk to as well. Um, I do hope everyone stays warm. Uh, this week, this is uh, we're, we're on day two for those of us with kids that are tomorrow they don't have school again. Um, you know, <laughs> so for those who are trying to stay stay warm, and I hope everyone's got power. Um, we also did not, you know, we, we lost some, so I hope everyone's. I hope the city's back on power. Um, that, that every all the residents are so that they can stay warm because it is getting so cold. Um, and I think um, I just I, um, I I think it's all tonight for me. So thank you very much. Thank you, Councilwoman. We will now hear from Council President Pro Tem Sampi. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, Kyle, for the presentation. I'm going to start out with that, work my way down. He's not here, but <laughs> I appreciate it. You know, one of the things as council members that we asked is more activities that involve families. So I'm really happy that they're listening to us. Um, the bowling night is great in addition to the board games and um, other programming. So that's that's pretty exciting. Um, I will also say thank you everyone that reached out to me again. If I did not get back to you in a timely fashion, I am sorry. Um, but I hope that we also, you know, everyone here on the dais can have conversations with anyone that reaches out. It's really important to understand perspective, also understanding everyone's goals as well, um, asking tough questions. I mean, this is, like I said, a two-year appointment. So hopefully people that want to be appointed are in it for the two years, in it for the long haul and want to continue as well too. You know, we want to just build momentum. There's a lot of projects that we start um, now and they continue on. So, you know, I, I know that the energy in the room is, is maybe y'all are taking a deep breath. We are, but, you know, thank you for being here and, and, you know, maybe some that are in the room expected an appointment to happen today, but we just want to talk with you and understand more. So I, I wanted to thank you again. Um, one of the things I wanted to mention is the city of Westland is doing um, or working on their 2050 strategic master plan. Um, I'm sitting on that committee. So what's they're in the process right now of working on a community survey. 
Um, it's gonna be distributed in February or March to the community. So one thing just to kind of keep your eye out is we want your voice. We wanna understand just your goals, um, some things you like or don't like, um, you know, just kind of giving you an example of what type of housing you live in, what are some priorities, you know, vote on your rank. Um, it's really, really, really important to share your feedback. So you'll probably hear more from me and probably it will be on the city's uh, social media and sent out, but it's just really important to share your feedback because it's gonna help us with our st strategic plan moving forward. So again, we wanna get that collective feedback. Um, so that's happening. Uh, congratulations, I, it was already talked about to all of our board appoint, appointees. Um, I wanted to thank the administration for their involvement in the MLK Day celebration that took place yesterday. Um, we had Lieutenant Governor Garland Gilchrist II as our keynote. It was a beautiful event. I always love this event. I was really sad that we couldn't do the walk, um, but of course it was very cold. But again, I wanted to thank everyone from the city of Westland that continues to participate and be involved in this event. It's just, it is always done well, very, very well. Um, and then over the weekend, so I'm gonna address this. I figure you will too, but um, DT failed us again. Um, I was out as much as possible helping people and I ran to get food for some people as well too. Um, I reached out to the administration. I know that they were busy as well too, but my hope is the administration can work with our council members to get a meeting together. It looks like it's probably in the works, but it is just so important that we get DT on the hook and accountable. And I am so sorry, those residents that reached out to me um, again, I had a single mom reach out to me and she lost everything in her freezer. She was devastated. So I am so sorry. Again, DT continues to not invest in Westland, not invest in their infrastructure. And this is a continuation over and over and over again. So I know you're probably gonna talk about it. I won't go into the large you know, DTE saga, but what I'm gonna say is one of the ideas that I brought up is a CERT team. What um, with our chiefs as well too, we're gonna get a meeting together. This was gonna allow people to come out in the community, work as critical volunteers. Um, I know the previous administration went door to door knocking, checking on people, providing resources. Um, I think we really need to, as a council and as a body, look at our ARPA dollars to figure out how we can invest in the CERT team and also take it a step further. Um, I was talking with Chief Stamper and I said, hey, I'm gonna work with the administration to see if we can turn City Hall into a warming center with cots and changing areas and uh, uh, like a charging tower as well. I, I'll tell you what, this has to happen here in Westland. It is extremely critical and I don't see it getting any better. So if DT is not gonna change, I, th I feel like we need to. So again, just keep on the horizon because I keep on talking about a CERT team. We were texting and you know, he said, I think your CERT team is warranted. So that's definitely something that is on my priority list and I'm, I'm not gonna stop until it happens. Um, thank you, Councilwoman, for mentioning about the basketball game. I was gonna mention that as well. Um, and I also wanted to encourage everyone to get out and vote as well. There's an election, um, it's coming up on the 30th and I hope everyone can go out and vote. Um, because we are the first and third, so our next meeting is not until February 5th, but if you wanna reach out to me, anyone can always call me, Facebook message me um, on Councilwoman Melissa Sampy's page. I'll give you my cell phone, 734-637-2078, and I'm so sorry, one more thing, guys. Um, it was brought up, too, about the rates at the golf course, Mr. Statchow. So I actually asked that too with our finance department who's not here. Um, apparently what, just for a point of cl clarification, um, I was asking him why the maintenance contract went up a little bit, but based on what we are seeing, we still are the lowest around for, um, I believe, in our surrounding area, and I can get you that information, we're still the lowest around even with the rate increase. But I did ask them, like, we need to be very considerate of those golf leagues and those individuals. So I'll get you some information, Mr. Statchell, on that. But anyways, be safe and kind with each other and stay around after anyone that wants to talk to me. Thank you. Thank you, President Pro Tem. Uh, first off, I again want to state that I am sorry for any miscommunication with Ms. Halton. Uh, was not my intent. Very sorry about that. I also look forward to meeting with you to have the chance to sit down, 
coffee, breakfast, lunch, whatever we'd like to do. I'll come and talk to you after the meeting about this. I want to thank my colleague, Councilman Rakowski, for making a motion on that uh, and helping out with that. And I want to apologize to all of my colleagues if anything that I may have miscommunicated to a resident led to uh, the postponement of the meeting. That's on me. I am sorry. And thank you for uh, making that motion. I very, very much appreciate that. A um, couple of other things here. Um, so I want to thank Mayor Coleman. I know he's not here tonight, but uh, for being on top of getting these warming centers open here. We had a lot of residents asking about that. It's been bitterly cold. And to get those open, you know, pretty quickly uh, was great. And I want to thank Mayor Coleman for, and his administration for being on top of that. Um, I also want to thank the administration, Mayor Coleman, uh, our Chief Diversity Officer, Pascal Easy, our Parks and Rec Director, Kyle Mulligan, and the entire team that went into planning a really great MLK Day event um, yesterday. And for all of you that, that that showed up and participated in the event. Thank you for, for being there. Mr. Thomas, uh, for playing the saxophone for us as always. And um, you know we very much appreciate your participation in that event each and every year. We had a really uh, terrific speaker in Lieutenant Governor Gilchrist and a really great panel as well. Um, I think sometimes with these MLK Day events, we hear the same quotes and the same speeches, but we don't have any discussion about what we're gonna do the other 364 days of the year. So for the panel that was organized this year, I know Mayor Lando had organized one last year as well, to have that kind of dialogue and discussion about what we can do when MLK Day is over is so important because it, it goes with any holiday like that, whether it's MLK Day or it's Juneteenth, where it's Black Liberation and Independence or it's our own Independence Day. We focus on those days for one day. And then what do we do after that? And there's so many issues that are important that we have to tackle um, that you know Dr. King spoke about. It's, yes, the legacy of racial equality and civil rights. Yes, the fact that we have for 60 years gone backwards on voting rights and the enfranchisement that we gave people has slowly been eroded at the federal level and purposefully, I believe, I might add. We have to talk about the economic struggle for economic justice that Dr. King talked about. If you remember when he was in Memphis in 1968 before his assassination, he was speaking about sanitation workers fighting for their right to have a fair wage, a fair collective bargaining agreement, to have good benefits, safe workplace conditions. So Dr. King's legacy was also one of economic justice because he understood he understood that poverty was as big a scourge on society as racism, and he understood that racism was a driver of poverty, and that equal economic opportunity for everyone was so critically important. And he also spoke, and this was mentioned uh, by the mayor, and I believe uh, both members of the panel yesterday, about Vietnam War and the movement for peace. And that Dr. King, when it was I mean, comically unpopular at a national level to be against the Vietnam War at first. Before we had gotten into the era of Nixon in the 70s, Dr. King spoke out long before many did and helped lead the anti-war movement on Vietnam. And um, I think it's important to, yes, honor his legacy on his birthday, but it's important to honor his legacy the other 364 days a year and not forget that. And I'm as guilty as anyone of losing sight of that. And I'm as guilty as anyone of getting carried away in my life and things that happen to me and the stress and the anxiety and the burden that, that, that I have. But I will say, coming from a point of privilege um, as a white male, I have more to give and more to do of me. And frankly, people should be asking more of me because I was born middle class to two middle class parents. I am a suburban white man and the point of privilege and the opportunity that were given to me by nothing that I did on my own volition, nothing, just by birth, was something that was not afforded to tens of millions of people in this country and generations of people. So um, we all owe it to honor his legacy each and every day. And when we lose sight of that, as public servants to you, you owe us a reminder that hey, we can do better and there is more we can do. And there are so many issues that just at the local level we can tackle that carry on his legacy from oversight and criminal justice to uh, 
economic empowerment and job opportunity to diversifying our city workforce so it actually looks like the community that they serve that is 20% African American, 4% Hispanic, 3% Arab American, so that we have equal opportunity for housing. So when we forget that lesson, and when we forget that legacy, when we fall short, thank you for reminding us and continue uh, to remind us on it. And thank you to the administration for putting on a great um, event. And then, yes, two other things. You're right, I did want to talk about DTE, but I've gone into that soliloquy uh, too many times before. You all know it's a joke. You all know it's a disgrace. Every time we have cold weather or wind or snow, the power goes out, and we need to do more to hold them accountable. I, you know, second the idea of having a public meeting with them. I know in the past, uh, several of us, Councilman Herzberg, Councilwoman Sampi, myself, Councilwoman Rakowski have called for this as well, and DTE promptly sent us an email saying, well, your facilities director can come to the dais and read it off, and they didn't want to show up. I know that residents have come to us time and again with complaints about DTE. I know, uh, you know, Jody's come before this, this council on many occasions over the years about DTE, and it, it, it really is a disgrace. The other thing that I think we can do is put pressure on them by looking into what the city of Ann Arbor is doing with the Ann Arbor for Public Power initiative. Because even if we can't achieve public power regionally right away, and it's a long-term goal, that kind of political pressure that we can put on DTE is going to force them to trim more trees, bury more miles of power line, and, and, and really focus on us as residents, small businesses, not their, not their corporate bottom line. So um, we have all more to do on the DTE issue, and you know they owe us all, because we're all residents like you, and we all experience these outages just like you. Uh, they owe us all a heck of a lot better than what they're doing. Um, last thing is, I wanted to say, over the years, several residents have reached out about this, and pretty much everybody on this council has expressed interest in doing a citywide visioning session, where we have the opportunity to just have a free-form dialogue with no restraint on the topic. And I'm happy to announce that we are looking at planning that for hopefully the end of February. I don't have an exact date nailed down, but we are looking at having a visioning session. And what that would entail is kind of a free range where the council and residents and the mayor can have a discussion on pretty much anything, as long as it's not a personal attack on anyone. If you've got a complaint, bring it to the visioning session and let us know. If you got an idea that you really like, you want a rec center, a public pool, more parks and rec amenities, bring it to the table. We want to have an open dialogue on things that are on your mind and things that are on our mind as, as council members so that we can begin as we move forward through the year tackling some of those concerns that you may have or bringing some of the amenities that you're looking for in the city of Westland or just bringing some new ideas to the table. So I did have the opportunity to send each of my colleagues uh, a spreadsheet with a tab with their name on it so they can give me their uh, top 10 uh, priorities and then highlight even further their top three because I think we wanna have uh, a good dialogue on some new ideas and uh, each of us offer something of great value to uh, bring to the table as well. And then a couple of other study sessions, I will leave you this that we are planning. Uh, we do have coming up next week, the audit presentation from Plant Moran. This is our yearly uh, budget audit done by Plant Moran. That's gonna be coming up on the 22nd over in the council study session chambers. We're going to uh, have one on the marijuana LJA study session next week on the 23rd, again in the uh, council chambers for study sessions. And then we're also looking at having one on the 29th regarding fire station number two. That is the new fire station that we are looking to build over on Merriman Road. That one we're hoping to have the uh, folks from formerly known as Plant Moran Cressa there to have some renderings and some drawings about what station two is going to uh, look like, what uh, features are going to be in there. So we're hoping to have that one on the 29th as well. And then finally, uh, tonight, again, my humble apologies to anyone I miscommunicated to, to all of my colleagues uh, on council. And we've got a big game coming up this weekend. Lions are going to kick butt against uh, Tampa Bay. And uh, is, with that, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Support. Great. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.